Are there any updates to the team? Q and A this time. So you've seen Q and A's. We did. Uh, we've done one on the main channel a bunch, and we've wow. done them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But it feels right to do one on the studio channel because you can talk to all of us, the whole team. So the two newest people to the team have been incredible, Mariah and Ellis. Mariah is an editor, video editor. So as you can imagine, turning footage into final products, something I've been doing for a very long time you finally let it go a little bit yeah found a person yeah. very skilled super mm -hmm. super quick to pick up the style and everything it's all been it's all been incredible yeah and we have ellis roman also who's now working as podcast producer you may have actually if you've been listening to the podcast you've probably heard his name in the credits um a lot of people are asking who he is he's fantastic incredible with sound really really good working with adam so far and i think the podcast is really been yeah. brought to new heights I'm overall excited. audio and video wizards 100 percent yeah I'm Adam, and I'm the podcast producer. I'm Ellis, and I'm an audio editor here for both the podcast and the channel and whatever else needs audio editing. This is true. Can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Mac, obviously you guys are familiar. We have Boris, Mariah's pup. Brandon, for the longest, has been sending us pictures of the cutest dog, and now we finally have her in the office. And this is where she is. Here she is. Look at her. Oh my gosh, she's perfect. I know. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You're sitting like a person. <laughs> why, are you, why are you sitting like a people? You're not a people. Yeah. You're not a people. She can't be a people, anyways. Can be a people. Thank you. Yeah. Like Thanks, Brandon. Oh. So, that's Rue. Okay, bye. Uh, we have my dog Zuri, who's who also the cutest dog. Also ever. super cute, and I love her. She's not in the studio today. We're trying to get Marquez to get a dog, but he refuses because we have all the studio pups. We what kind just, of dog we just would get, get Marquez a dog? Oh, can we just get Marquez a show dog? Show up at the office one day and be like, this is yours now. Here's your new German Shepherd. <laughs> you, yeah, it'd be like a big dog. <laughs> I mean, it's at it's least it. once a week. I was going to say two. I'm Vin, art director here. I'm Brandon, class clown. Gotta have a Wawa. Hey, I'm Hayato. I'm the producer for the studio channel. And I'm Mariah, the editor for the MKBHD channel. I was an editor for Android Central, so I did a lot of writing for the site. I did the videos, shooting, hosting, editing, all the things. I've been editing videos for probably like 10 years, if I had to guess. But before this, I worked for three years at a local company in St. Louis as their main video editor, and I would do the camera stuff, I'd help with the scripts, I'd do like a little bit of everything. I was working at Android Authority as their senior reporter, producer, video producer, editor, reviewer, everything, or I... How does that look on a resume? <laughs> Prior to this job, I was a junior graphic designer at a place called One Trick Pony, and they were an advertising agency. They also called themselves like a creative shop. Um, but I did a lot of stuff there. I worked on websites, I worked on branding, I worked on logos. I mostly worked for uh, like large performing arts organizations. So think like orchestras, dance companies, art museums. And I guess before this, I was doing a lot more like composing and, mm. and writing music than I do here. But for the most part, it's the same thing. I worked with David at a different website uh, called Android Authority, one of their sub-brands, Sound Guys. I handled headphones, reviews, speakers, reviews, like general FAQ stuff. Uh, their YouTube channel, I did all that. Um, I was an actor. Oh, I was a producer for another YouTube channel, Justin. Shout out to Justin, he's still kicking. I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. We I, have not got the green light yet. Yeah, I was told not to talk about it, and I'm just going to not talk about it until they say we can. I'm Tim. I'm the graphic designer for the channel. Hey, I'm David, and I'm the writer and researcher. The postmortems are definitely not, they're not very official. They're sort of just like office conversation. I usually ask for feedback on stuff for like the waveform clips because it's so topical. So I just want to make sure that when we do the thumb, 
It feels like something that people would want to click. It feels like it's representing the subject matter properly. Have we changed a thumbnail before? I think we've done it for waveform clip stuff uh, where we've... Adam has looked at the click-through rate and we've actually changed and edited and sometimes it improves and sometimes it kind of makes a negligible difference. Mm. There's a simple answer for this one, uh, which is that I live and work remotely from San Francisco, uh, while pretty much everyone else lives somewhere in the New Jersey, New York area. Uh, if I want to be in a video, um, I got to go fly in. And I've done that for a few videos, namely the like studio tour and things like that. Um, and I'd like to do it more, but it's kind of a limitation we're at right now. Well, I mean, it's the videos themselves are always, we're just trying to get better, just trying to make better stuff. I don't know, stuff like the Met Gala just happens, but yeah. like the videos we're trying to make good. Growing the team, we've been able to up our quantity, but we're also upping the quality and having more time to work on specific things we're trying to do. Like the yeah. nothing phone intro was like, we just grabbed everything that was clear and, and had some time to do that one day. And like, there's all these different more like experimental things we're trying, not just on here, but on Waveform and on the studio channel. Okay, yeah, so I don't, that's not the car that I drive. <laughs> I don't drive every day with it just on the top of the car, like to go get groceries or something. That is a separate car dedicated to just always having the camera rig on it. So anytime we had an idea or wanted to go shoot a car thing, we just do it. The video that took the most planning was the road trip. There was a lot of prep work for the road trip video. I think that was also probably the one that took the most production um, afterwards. It, it, I think it spent about a week and a half, maybe two weeks on each of the two episodes. It's been pretty low key so far this summer since all the stuff comes out in the fall. But when there is like a quick turnaround time, you're like, well. I think as we get into the busier season here in the next month or two, like you're gonna have it harder than me because like main channel has more deadlines, you know? Mm -hmm. Studio stuff, we try to get like a consistent schedule, but also it's not like a, it's not a super tight deadline. You've mm -hmm. got like embargoes to hit and yeah, I feel like unscripted also like you have to figure out like where the thread in the story is. Yeah. And so that takes probably more time. If Marquez just sat down and was just saying things and I had to like make it make sense, that would probably take a lot more time. I handle most of the audio mm -hmm. in the studio, I'd say. Like one of the first videos I worked on was the electric F-150, the F-150 Lightning video. Mm -hmm. And there was this weird challenge where Marquez had some of the A-roll done outdoors, some of the A-roll oh, done yeah. indoors, and some of the A-roll done in the car. Mm -hmm. um, so we had these three different locations that kind of sounded way different. And it was this kind of interesting challenge where like, I couldn't make them all sound exactly the same because yeah. that would, it would That'd look weird. Jarring. Yeah, you'd see these different locations and not hear the different spaces. Um, but I did have to level them out yeah. so that it was a little bit more conducive. So yeah, some of the more extreme audio stuff, I'll tackle probably 50% of yeah. videos. Marquez handles the audio or Mariah handles the audio or just There's hours. also like, it depends on what you qualify as audio because then there's sound effects that like Vin has a big part of too. Yeah. So like Vin and Brandy, when they're working on intros, we'll just try and figure out what sound effects would look good or sound good for certain parts of the yeah. intro. So like everyone kind of does audio to just yeah. depends on what the final product is going to be. We generally tend to just make it work. Yeah, I don't think we really scrap anything. We just re rework them. Like generally the one that I'm thinking about is like that one Apple Watch shot that we tried to get that we were in the room uh. for like like yeah, it was, there's it was usually like completely different idea. Yeah. Usually technical difficulties with like machinery that like gets us to stop. I mean that was that was also the Mia days, so <laughs> Mia would be like, This is what the camera's gonna do. And then we try and do that once and it doesn't work. Yeah. And we're like, 
this is what the camera's going to do. And yeah, so. we, get, we get ideas in our heads, and seven times out of ten, we get pretty close, and then the other three times, we really have to bend the idea around the hardware. So. We almost never scrap, though. I yeah. can't think of a shot we fully scrapped. It's kind of a sunken cost thing where we get in so deep, we're like eight hours into a <laughs> shoot, we're like, we're not scrapping this. We're getting something good out of this. It's just going to be different from what we started with. It's kind of different for each one. With the waveform stuff, that was pretty much all baked when I got here. It was just a matter of implementing it into the banners and into other stuff. So I kind of cleaned up the logo a little bit, but that stuff was already done. The main channel stuff, pretty much the same thing. Like Michael had done a lot of work. These guys have done a lot of work with the logo. Um, the studio was the biggest lift, but I did go through probably like 30 or 40 different iterations of logos before arriving on the final one. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had a month to work on it, so it just took a lot of time and, and trial and error experimentation. I think there have only been two videos edited by somebody else. Uh, David edited the OnePlus reactions video when I was out, and then we had the Leica M11 video was a collaborative thing, so I, I shot and edited like the last two minutes where we went to Central Park. Um, otherwise, that was all David and Brandon together, so. The main channel being over 10 years old has found its own voice through like a single person editing it the whole time. So being like the second person to ever edit like for the main channel is like kind of weird. Because it's cool I've, though, it's a big I've deal. I've watched it for so long, like since he's been in his college dorm, so it's like, you know the style has a very specific like structure and like element to it. There was handoff for um, the dope tech we just did, where I did the Odyssey arc section of the video, and then he did the rest of the content um, for that episode. But it's mostly like I'll be handed all the footage from like Brandon and Marquez, and then I just go straight through it and do it all myself. So. I just want to say sound is such a funny thing. Yeah. Because silent and hum are opposites. Mm -hmm. And yet when you say the silent hum, I instantly <laughs> know what you're talking, everyone instantly knows what you're talking about. The silent hum is the air conditioning, or it's the HVAC system yeah. in the building. Um, and pretty much as soon as I got hired here, that was like public enemy number one, yeah. was trying to get rid of the silent hum. So if you listen to some of the videos that I've worked on, Hopefully, you don't hear the silent hum. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the the iPad OS 16 video should be humless. The um, problem, too, is that you don't want to completely just get rid of everything because yeah. then it sounds weird. It's like every time someone talks, you'll hear them. But then when they're not talking, it just gets silent. So for the yeah. longest, we couldn't just like cut it out because then Marquez would talk like this. So uh, Ellis has found a way to like mesh the two so yeah. it, it sounds like natural but hopefully a lot less of the hum thank you yeah the silent hum as you the said the silent hum good question we met each other through uh, a job that he had previously and uh, we started working together after that point because we were like um, oh we were well yeah. together like same just ideas. the two of us like Fully producing like yeah. an out like I would say an outstanding video for yeah. that time. At that point, Marquez reached out to us, and um, the rest is history. So, I think the moral of the story from my from my end is you never know. Michael okay. actually pitched me the job. I I didn't see the application, and he shared it to me on Facebook, and then we had like a long phone call, which I'm eternally grateful for and convinced me that this would be a good like place to get in on the ground floor and it's been amazing so you're amazing big thanks to michael <laughs> <laughs> how'd you get hired um i got hired because marquez tweeted it and i applied uh i used to watch uh marquez's videos as i was like falling asleep and uh the week that he put out the video that was like i'm hiring i remember watching that like right as I was drifting off to bed and like the last thought I had before my eyes closed were like, oh, I should apply to that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did. And here you are. Yeah. Worked out. <laughs> uh, 
this is one of the things if you talk to I've, I have a lot of YouTube friends who we talk about like if you have a second channel what do you put on it mm -hmm. and if you have a third channel what do you put on that and people get really used to a certain format or a yeah. certain type of video on the main channel to the point where uh, the second channel is just the place to put ideas and cool things that are just not in that box. So we have all kinds of ideas. It yeah. also forces me in particular to be a little more uh, out loud about the behind the scenes process. Usually I just make the thing, mm -hmm. but it's kind of fun to like actually break down how we're doing it, narrate it a little bit. The studio channel, at least in this first year of it being created is like very experimental. And I think it opens the opportunity to be able for people around here to review things that they're really interested in. Like, I love gaming. We barely touch gaming on the main channel and I'm trying to find ways that we can do that on the studio channel. Exactly. We're really finding our, our efficiency on it and we'll have way more stuff coming out soon. Most of the studio videos we shot on like a, a Sony A1 or A7S III for a while and then we moved to the Canon R5. Now we've got three Canon C70s that we're using for this video and hopefully all future videos. The C70 is uh, a lot bigger than I would like for like vloggy style videos, but it, it's, it's such a phenomenal camera. Um, the image, even though it's a really similar camera to the R5 in theory, like it, the image looks way better to me. Uh, colors really well, C-Log2 is fantastic. Like I, I love these things. And direct onboard XLR is fantastic. We're using a Sennheiser MKH416 right now, the same thing that we use for the main channel. I, I'm super happy with this setup. Sometimes we'll use the studio channel also as an opportunity to test a new camera. So uh, a couple a couple weeks ago, we released a Nikon Z30 test footage video that, um, you know, it, it wasn't anything crazy. It wasn't like a sponsored video, but we just kind of wanted to showcase the camera that got sent to us. And, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully do more of that in future videos. I will say that the New York Buds uh, do have some good dinner sometimes. We're trying to convince other non-New York Buds to become New York Buds. New York Buds are very expensive, so like, can't, can't afford that. <laughs> Living out in San Francisco, I don't really um, have as much of an opportunity to see everybody. It's about time for me to get back out there and, and see everybody, especially because there's a couple of new new people that I haven't met. You know, I got hired as like a writer researcher, but I it's expanded. Like we have long form podcast episodes now that I am really excited about and am sort of working on a lot. And I'm also helping with the main podcast sometimes. For example, Adam is gone the week that we're that we're recording this, and so I was able to like step in and fill in for him. And I think that that's something that Mark has hired for on purpose was that we a lot of us were sort of already our own. YouTube entities and created things from scratch and knew how to do every step of the way before we even got hired here. So being able to fill in gaps was very useful. Everyone knows this space so well and uh, has been doing it long enough that like, it's a very trusting group. So um, I might be the graphic designer, but the, the best idea for a thumb or a t-shirt or channel art might come from somebody else and it's just a matter of me executing it like i think it's just not about having too much pride and i feel like we all we all are capable of doing everyone's job like you said yeah the real graphic design was the friends you made along the way <laughs> so <laughs> so i live with andrew and i just ride with him <laughs> we yeah. carpool or carpool yeah he drives me to work that's really, <laughs> that's what it is or we take public transportation which turns into an adventure every morning and yeah. we walk in the morning into the office with a story so either way it works Hayato sometimes comes with us yeah like this morning I mean for me video skills were almost entirely self-taught and by self-taught, I mean just grabbing a camera and shooting, and to an extent, watching a bunch of online tutorials on how to do stuff that I was trying to figure out how to do. Making a lot of bad videos until they gradually become better videos, and yeah, just, I've been doing this for, I mean, think about the same as you, like a, 
about a decade, give or take. Yeah, like it's not something that happens fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. YouTube University, baby! <laughs> I would say 90% of my time is making horrible, disgusting things, and then the 10% is like the pretty okay, decent stuff, but no one sees the 90% that's really, really bad. Yeah. We made a Skillshare course on a lot of this stuff. It's, it's just available. We made a masterclass on some of the communication specifics. You should have someone there to tell you that it is very, very bad because if you make it for yourself, you're like tunnel vision and you're like, this is great. This is the best thing I've ever made in my entire life. It's your baby. Yeah, and then you show it to someone and they're like, what is that? I think there's a nice uh, evolution though from like when you're making bad videos and then you get good enough to make like pretty good videos, but then you get good enough to make good videos with intentionally bad edits later. That's, you've come full circle. Yeah, that is yeah. Well, that is a really interesting distinction. This, yes. The, the team, the studio, mm -hmm. because everyone has all these different overlapping skills, is the only reason that now we do have overlapping projects. Three, four years ago, when it was a smaller number of us, yeah. it was one thing at a time, start the project, mm -hmm. and we don't even think about the next one until it's done. And like, that's just main channel. Now we're starting to work on some other things on the main channel, but now you also include studio and waveform. Like, yep. Every day I come in, I probably have my eyes on two to three projects, just trying to figure, like, make sure everything, we're on schedule for everything, and it's it's really fun. It's fun to watch that many projects, like, happen at the same time, and this team is yeah. insanely capable of of being efficient and getting to have all those things work together. I'm it's hoping, fun to watch. I'm hoping you guys notice yeah. that there is more good stuff to watch. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make channels that we would subscribe to, and we're trying to make videos that we'd want to watch. For sure. Hopefully we're successful. I work primarily on one thing at a time. Um, it's usually uh, Marquez or Tim or Hayato will send me something to work on and I usually bust it out that same day, if not like next day turnaround. So for me, it's 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 a lot of um, quick one and done and then I never really think about that animation again until the next one comes up, so. <laughs> It's definitely not something we're like super hyper focused on for the most part. It's never crazily in your face unless like we want to make it obvious. Yeah, like it's it's usually pretty last minute. Like adding six androids and a wallpaper that has an A in it for the six A set. Like it's that kind of stuff. Like it's very last minute, super simple stuff. So. Mine right now, I just said this on the podcast the other day, is I think Snapchat is the closest thing the US has to a, a cross-platform messaging system like iMessage for Android. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot of, it's not there yet, but I think it's the closest thing we have. My hot take is uh, real customers don't care about panel gaps. Radio Lab, I think, specifically was the first piece of media that I ever got obsessed with in like 2009. And I think that the way that they tell a story is like one of the, still to this day, one of the best narrative ways to tell a story that I've experienced. And it has definitely affected how I like to both make videos, but then also make like the long form podcast episodes that we make. There's a lot of designers that I follow to name one of them would be Ali Moss or Michael Beirut or Paula Shear, like Pentagram in New York is a huge inspiration to me. Like they always do just incredible work. A lot of like Netflix shows and like Hulu, Euphoria and whatnot. We love taking lighting inspiration from them. I love anything Boz Lerman. Like, you know, those movies are just like incredible. The Super Carlin Brothers, mm. which they do a lot of like Disney Pixar theories and I'm obsessed with Harry Potter so they talk about Harry Potter all the time but the editor always puts in like funny little little jokes and like memes kind of that if you've been watching long enough or even if it's your first time you like kind of it's like an inside joke type of thing and it flashes on the screen really quick and then it disappears so when I first started this channel with Marquez and Andrew we were talking about how to launch the video of the po of the podcast and I was like, I want to do that. I want to like try and mm. insert a little bit of like editing jokes into the video. Right now, my favorite channels I think are Secret Base, um, Technology Connections, 
William Osman stuff made here. I really enjoy like Builder YouTube. Mm. Um, shout out to all the creators that are part of NASCAR YouTube. Slap Shoes, your videos are awesome. I think when we when we launched this studio, like a, a lot of us kind of brought up Corridor Crew as as sort of a base point of reference for what we were kind of trying to accomplish. And I I think the Try Guys are a really good example of a channel who has that whole optimization down as far as like grabbing your attention with a thumbnail, with the with the title. There's a ton of good food YouTubers if you haven't watched Maddie Matheson, if you haven't watched um, Food Ranger, if you haven't watched. It would be really cool to collab with Joshua Weissman. If you guys want to come use our robot room. Please. Please come use our robot. That would be amazing. Tweet at Joshua Weissman. Get him here. Would be cool. Yeah, my favorite snack at work is gonna be the dried mangoes. I had a couple things I was gonna choose from, but I think this is my number one. It's right. There's a lot of good snacks. I think I'm an Aussie Bites person. I brought everyone onto the studio on these from Costco, and they're like, oh, they're so good. God, that's heavy. So my, my snack of choice is the peanut butter pretzels because I'm a peanut butter fiend. You gotta have the That's It bars, only fruit. The only two ingredients. Wait, what's your salad. favorite flavor of the three, though? Oh, blueberry for sure. <laughs> it's really big. <laughs> My favorite snack in the office for sure is these fig bars. We got blueberry and raspberry. I love the blueberry ones with a black coffee in the morning. It's fantastic. <laughs> so this is objectively the best snack. Is this in focus for you? The spicy queso, 10 out of 10. Um, they are all gone immediately. That plus um, Ellis discovered a little guacamole. It goes a long way. Oh. Peanut butter pretzels, they are dangerous as heck, and you have no idea how many calories are in these. And how many? So, eight is 130. That's not too bad. Not when you're just like grabbing handfuls. Organic. Yeah. Wow. The organic part has nothing to do with why I like them. They're are just. Are they made of plants? I don't know. But they're really good and they're really addictive. For me, the very first thing I worked on with Marquez was the uh, 2017 intro animation, which was just a real simple logo swipe on. So it was like whatever the first video in January of 2017 was, was the first first time any of my work showed up on the channel. Didn't we do the um, HomePod? The A-roll set for um, Snapchat spectacles? Wasn't that like ripped a Snapchat or something? Yeah. Or like a problem mm -hmm. with Snapchat? Mm -hmm. The thumbnail that I remember that was like really big when I first started was the F-150. Mm, yeah. And then that went in Top Gear magazine. We made the Apple versus the Paradox of Choice video, which I worked on a lot and I was really, really happy and proud of that video too, so. Yes, absolutely. There's, um, the last Match Cut video that we did absolutely tanked. It was like, I think it's still the worst performing video on the channel, but I don't really care. It was a lot of fun to shoot and produce. Um, it's a great way to have guests on. We had Isaac on last time. Um, it, maybe next time we'll have a different judge or a different contestant. So yeah, I, I, love, I loved making Match Cut. Definitely want to do that again. By the way, this is Fern. Uh, she's an unofficial member of MKBHD. She hasn't met anybody. Well, actually, she met Tim. Um, maybe someday. She was sleeping on my lap for the entire interview, but now she wants to get away. But I couldn't resist doing this for a blooper. 